Hello, oh, good morning, good morning. No camera video today because I'm in the in the other car, but um, just wanted to do a quick note about um, dentistry. It's been on the news this morning. It was on uh, Good Morning Britain. Um, they had a guy on who'd um, pulled one of his own teeth out. Young guy, actually, in his early 30s, I'd say. And, um, you know, well, no, no, he's 32, because he said he had, hadn't been to the dentist since he was 16. And uh, and uh, that's right, and it was 16 years since he'd seen a dentist. So, and that's quite common. I mean, you see a lot of young adults uh, who don't, uh, you know, go to the dentist. As soon as their parents stop taking them, they just don't go. So, um, they, uh, he, they got him on there, uh, Richard and whoever was not Judy. Um, and started uh, the, the 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 whole uh, thing about was they're going to use like an intro camera to have a look inside his mouth, which didn't work during the um, well, on live on TV, but they had some recorded footage. And I just want to make a few comments um, because uh, Eddie Crouch was on there from the British Dental Association, and I think he got a much better. I mean, I, I he always gets a much better reception than I used to when I went on. I was on during the dentist strike in 1992 and uh, subsequently, you know, 2006, etc. And I get a much less favorable um, reception from uh, mainstream media than Eddie does. And I was just trying to think why that is because the attitude when I was on was always like, dentists are extremely wealthy people. And, uh, you know, they're holding the NHS to ransom and surely the, the funding deficit could be closed if only dentists would accept a, a cut in their pay from the astronomical levels that it is down to something more affordable for the country and um, whereas Eddie just sits there um, like somebody's favorite uncle you know with his tin of Werther's and and doesn't say much other than um, you know yeah I agree with you I agree with you the dentistry is um, underfunded etc etc even when they tried to have a little go at him and talk about how um, you know uh, it was right that patients shouldn't be allowed to shouldn't shouldn't be able to get NHS dentistry while while we sit back and enjoy our private dentist lifestyles, that's what she said. But he he just glossed over that, you know. So I think he's definitely got a better technique than me because he's managed to get the public on. I don't know whether it's like thirty years later, the people are more inclined to blame the government. I mean, he can't. This has been going on for 30 years now. It can't be the fault of every single dentist for the last 30 years. Uh, there has to be some, and I think there's a much, uh, uh, as I say, there's a much more, the, the public are much more demanding of the government that the government should provide everything. Um, and the government was much, uh, I think in the early days, they were more able to persuade the public that there would be enough NHS dentistry because there had been, if only we, if the profession did things differently. Um, <coughs> but a couple of things jumped out to me immediately as a dentist. And one is this guy who's uh, last went when he was 16, hasn't been for 16 years, and he's now pulling his own teeth out, right? So they had a bit of pre-recorded footage inside his mouth, and it's quite clear he's got a large MO carious cavity in his upper right four. And they don't, I mean, I'll tell you this because yesterday I had somebody in who's in their mid-twenties who had 32 teeth, all perfect, none of them filled, all perfectly arranged orthodontically and um, and uh, no no decay and all four wisdom teeth present and everything. And, and so it was just like very, very rarely have I ever seen anything like that. Very rarely. Um... And what made it worse, and why I'm going to remember it, is because uh, she went to see another dentist, uh, my dentist, in Harrison Road, in Ramsgate, which is um, notorious, notorious, <laughs> locally, and was told that she needed an MO in her upper left six. And this was three years ago. And I obviously did bite wings, and I couldn't see an MO that I would say needed doing in her upper left six. Um, and certainly after three years, I would expect it to have expanded to the point where it was like sticking out like the tail on a dog's bum. So it's not like... So you have to ask yourself, why? Have they got a super sensitive x-ray? Or have they got super sensitive uh, targets in terms of income? 
or what i don't know what or whether you know whether they just needed a one filling to bump it up to the next band you know from a checkup to a treatment band that's what i suspect is they just need to find one filling on absolutely everybody just to bump it up into the next band and that tells you about how pernicious the bands are but um you know the, the this guy, although if he'd said, oh, I've not been able to get a dentist since before COVID, or even if I've not been able to get a dentist for the last five years, I would have had more sympathy with him. Because I think that 16 years encompasses a, a time when, when he could have gone to see a dentist, doesn't it? Probably the first 10 years of those 16 years. It's possible with a bit of patience and possibly a bit of traveling around, he could have gone to see a dentist. But he's obviously a, a recidivist. He definitely doesn't want to go and see a dentist. He wouldn't go and see a dentist even when one was available. So I don't see what, how he's got the right to complain that he can't see one now. So, uh, and, and again, this took me back to 92 and the dentist strike. And which, you know, where I was um, in leading the GDPA charge at the time, uh, the Dentist uh, Association. And <clears throat> we, we quite frequently complained that we didn't have the support of the public. We were fighting the Department of Health. Department of Health was showing all the signs of abolishing the service. You know, we knew that what they were doing was going to lead to the provision of less NHS dentistry, not not the complete collapse, because we thought there'd always be some dentists whose standards were low enough to keep it going. But as it turns out, that you know, 99% of dentists now have decided to draw a line in the sand, and enough is enough. But um, we, the government at every stage, at every change they've made, every bit of rule, regulation they've brought in, every action they've taken, they've been told that uh, it would lead to the death of NHS dentistry. And they've still gone ahead and done it, you know? They, do, they honestly do believe that they are, they are uh, omniscient. And uh, the, the, the uh, sort of the, Soviet collectivist approach is is still the best one having even though it's obviously demonstrably caused the collapse of the service so <clears throat> then you've got a bloke there who really I don't have much sympathy with because for a start he's his entire life he's not really taken any notice of because because the way if you don't want to pull your own teeth out and you don't want to go to the dentist then you have to put yourself on a sugar-free diet really that's what it boils down to brush your teeth once a day really thoroughly and cut out cakes, biscuits, sweets and fizzy drinks. <coughs> That's how you get a patient like mine yesterday and stay away from dentists in her case. Um, because um, that, and that's how you get perfect teeth, you know, without necessarily spending thousands of pounds. If you are going to eat cakes, biscuits and sweets and get big Carey's decayed upper premolars, um, then um, then you're going to need a dentist. I'm going to be quite honest with you. You're going to need a dentist. So, I mean, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm pleased with the way things are going, but I can. I'm interested to see why they're going, how they're going now, because uh, as I say, Eddie's Eddie's like, you know, oh yeah, no, I agree, I agree. You shouldn't be pulling your own teeth out. You know, he sort of, he sort of divorce the, prof the profession from the sort of criticism that we always had. But my, my major complaint was that every chance that the government, that the public had to support us, every chance that the public had to listen to our case and say, yes, uh, the dentists who know how to do dentistry, who know how to run dentistry, have got a point here. If this is done this way, then there'll be less NHS in the future. Um, then they they didn't support us. They voted against us. They wrote letters uh, against us. You know they lobbied against us. They um, and and to a certain extent they've got the system that they they deserve because they didn't support us. You now I know I might I might be coming across a bit bitter because we didn't get any support in '92. And I know for most people that's ancient history. I mean we're talking what 30 years ago now. Uh, it's not ancient history to me because I lived through it. I still remember it very vividly. I remember the joke about um, the dentist who was shot, but it was only safe because the bullet hit his wallet. Uh, I mean, this is the attitude of the public at the time. And 30 years down the line, they've got no NHS as a result. As a result of their own actions, of their, as a result of their own inactivity, their own disinterest, 
their own uh, inaction. And, um, you know, they, they, the stupid system of unit, units of dental activity, which has persisted probably for at least a decade longer than it should have done, um, which was the brainchild of the chief dental officer, Barry Cockrell, uh, who, who, you know, really pioneered all the changes that wrecked the service and is now retired. So, you know, he was the master, he was the mastermind and him and Chris Audrey behind the units of dental activity system. And um, which leads to dentists looking at 32 perfect teeth and deciding that they're going to vandalize them. That they're going to, to <laughs> literally deface these teeth with a, with a filling that's not necessary. And, uh, you know, which is akin to just stepping up to Mona Lisa and just with a standing knife and just cutting out the smile. I <clears throat> I have nothing but contempt for these people, I think. And I really don't have much more than contempt for the general public, to be honest. Because they get you get the system you deserve, and they deserve the system, and now they've got it. And, and asking what to do now, and they always say, oh, well, what would you do? What, what should we do? What should we do? You know, we've heard what you say about the government, but what, what needs to be done? And there's two answers to that. The, the, what, the first answer is, there's no point throwing yourself off a cliff and then asking yourself what to do about two yards before you hit the beach below. And that's really where we are. This is already a system that's, that's, that's gone, you know, it cannot be remediated. If it, the only way it could be remediated is if they went back to the system pre-1990 of uh, FIFA item with a uh, uh, Targi and Tani which was a system which worked really well from 1948 to about 1990, 1992. Uh, and anyone could get an NHS dentist anywhere. So, I mean, you really, you just got to say, I mean, I'm not going to explain to you how that system worked. All you need to know is that for uh, over 50 years, it worked. And so you could just bring it back in again and things would pretty quickly sort of rectify themselves. So there's two answers. But the main, the main, but they're not going to do that, and so they're stuck with the, we're, 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 you know, two, we're two meters away from the beach. Uh, <laughs> how do we? What do we do? What, give us some advice. What do we do? The, I'll, I'll give you some advice. There's no advice. There's no advice that can be given to you. All right, you, the whole system is going to break down. That's what you engineered, and that's what you got. Okay. I'm not going to say I told you so, but everybody who knows how I've been involved in dentistry knows that I told them so for 30 years. So, you know, but good, good on Eddie, you know, good on Eddie. I think his approach is working. Uh, he just, he comes across as a bit, you know, how can I put it? You can't really have a go at him, do you know what I mean? For me, you could have a go at, yeah. All right, talk to you soon, bye.